Good morning, Anthem. Welcome to chapel and happy March. I can't believe it's already the third month of 2021. Uh, that means, since we are in the beginning of March, we're going to look back at February and talk about our students of the month. So I've got them right here. Uh, congratulations to all of our students of the month for all your hard work and dedication. Uh, in kindergarten, we have Tatiana Almond for her obedient for her obedience and for trying so hard to strive in her studies. In first grade, Nate Garza for showing improvement in completing his tasks and for his positive attitude. In second grade, Royal Crawley for her positive attitude and marked improvement in her classwork. In third grade, Amity Peters for her responsibility, integrity, and positive attitude that she brings to class every day. In fourth grade, Rikuto Furuichi for his attention and his focus on Zoom. In fifth grade, Zyvan Tamiano for his responsibility with his homework. In sixth grade, Ian Negron for working intently to make better decisions and showing great improvement in his obedience. In junior high, uh, Eliza Matabag for helpfulness in class and for being a great friend. And we also have Isabel Perez for her hard work and thoughtfulness. Again, congratulations to all our students of the month. Uh, if you weren't on the list for last month, keep working hard. You can do it. Uh, you can just work hard and achieve being student of the month. So right now we're going to transition into uh, worshiping together. So let's do that. And then we'll talk a little bit about uh, what's coming up, which is Easter. I'll see you in a minute. is running after, it's running after me, with my 
life laid down and surrendered now I give you everything Your goodness is running after It's running after me Sing it again Your goodness is running after It's running after me Your goodness is running after It's running after me With my life laid down and surrendered now I give you everything your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Cause all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness. All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God Well, today we're going to be talking about Easter And we're going to be talking about this over the coming weeks as we lead up to Easter because it's the beginning of March and we have just one month until we're on Easter break. And at the end of Easter break is Easter Sunday and we all celebrate uh, that great day. So over these next few weeks, I wanna talk about Easter and then there's so many different parts to the Easter story. So each week I wanna kind of focus in on maybe some uh, characters in the Easter story and what they went through or how things unfolded throughout that story. But first, today, today I just want to kind of set up what Easter is. When you think about Easter, when you think about this holiday that comes every year around the beginning of springtime, what do you think about? You might think about candy, right? There's a lot of uh, candy that it, uh, comes around at Easter time. You might think about Easter eggs, whether they're real eggs that you boil, then you put them in some dye and they're colored and you hide them around, or they're those plastic eggs that you fill full of more candy and then you hide them around your yard or wherever, your house, and you go try to find them, right? You might think about the Easter bunny, right? We're gonna see a lot of Easter bunny things in the stores now because it's Easter, so there's the Easter bunny. Uh, you might think about springtime because it happens. Easter comes around every March or April, the beginning of springtime each year. And those are all fun things that as a culture we uh, have as part of Easter, but uh, it, it, it doesn't tell the true story of Easter. It's okay to do those things. They're fun but we also need to remember why we celebrate this holiday. So, uh, like I said, over the next few weeks, we're gonna be looking at different parts of the Easter story. And today I'm gonna give just an overview of what kind of led up to Easter. You know, we talk about in the Bible, there's the Old Testament and the New Testament. And over the past couple months, we've been looking at characters some from the New Testament, which is kind of Jesus and afterwards, or some from the Old Testament, which is the first part of the book. It's even, you know, the big part of the Bible. And there's all kinds of characters there. And we've talked about a couple of those. This um, Old Testament, this whole story is the story of God's people really waiting for a savior. God takes the, his people, the Israelites, the Hebrews, he takes them through so many journeys and through so many hundreds and thousands of years of all this stuff and they're, they're waiting for a savior. God makes promises to his people and he says, I will deliver you, there is a savior coming. And at the end of the Old Testament, we see all these prophets 
who are talking about this coming Savior, this Redeemer who's going to come and you know, free His people and, and redeem them and save them. And it's going to be this great, awesome thing. And so for, again, hundreds of years, thousands of years, that's a long time, God's people have been waiting for this Savior. And along comes a guy named Jesus, right? And, and Jesus, God sent <laughs> Jesus, His only Son, to earth, God in human form. And Jesus has this ministry on earth and he interacts with people and, and has all these, there's all these stories in the New Testament about, Testament about Jesus talking to different people and interacting with different people. And he is this savior that was promised. And what's interesting is for those hundreds and thousands of years that God's people had waited for this Savior, they kind of had this idea in their mind that when this Savior comes, He's going to establish this kingdom and He's going to rule over it and we're going to live in it and we're going to be free and it's all going to be awesome. Everything's going to be great because this Savior is coming. Now, all these, all these years, these God's people, they had been under oppression from different empires in the Middle East. So sometimes they were under Egyptian rule, sometimes they were under Assyrian rule, all these different empires that were around back then, they kept conquering God's people. And that was a bummer, right? When you're, you think, wow, we're, God's made us all these promises, but we keep getting conquered. And we keep having, we keep losing these battles, and our our land gets taken from us. Everything is 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 wiped away, and, and now it feels like, you know, how is this going to work? Because these empires are so powerful. How can we eventually get our land back? How can we build our own kingdom? We were waiting for that Savior to come and conquer, so that we can have our own kingdom, God's kingdom, and it's it. it you know, it's interesting, after so many years of that, they had in their minds that the Savior that was coming was a, like a military leader. They thought he is going to come and he's going to conquer because all they'd experienced up until this point was being conquered. And so the only way to win back then was to conquer through, you know, military strength, right? You bring in a big army and you're the best and you win. But Jesus came and he kind of like threw all that stuff out the window, which was kind of boggling minds right back then because Jesus came and he talked about serving others. He talked about loving your enemy as yourself. And these are not things that are going to win a big military battle. And, and create this kingdom that they were promised. And so that's what's so cool and interesting about the Easter story is it was totally unexpected. The way that Jesus brought the kingdom of God here, the way that he redeemed his people and all people, it, it was nothing like they expected back then. Because Jesus, he came and he gave his own life. He sacrificed himself on that cross. We know the Easter story, Jesus died on the cross and then three days later rose again. And when he rose and he appeared to the disciples and to different people, uh, even then they thought, oh my goodness, he rose from the dead, this is insane. And so now, if a guy like that can have the power to raise himself from the dead, well, surely he must be able to amass this army and we're gonna go conquer the lands. But that's not what Jesus called his people to. Jesus called his people to serve. And so this kingdom that he brought, uh, you know, Jesus being God uh, was actually quite smart because the kingdoms of this earth they rise and they fall. Uh, 
no matter what. Empires rise and empires fall. When Jesus was around, it was the Roman Empire that was ruling over God's people, the Israelites. And that Roman Empire seemed so strong and so powerful, but eventually it fell. And so throughout history, when we look back, every empire, every nation rises and eventually falls, transitions into something else because new powers take over. And the same is true today. It hasn't stopped, right? Empires, countries still rise and they still will fall. So Jesus didn't want to build his kingdom based on that. He didn't want to build an empire that, you know, full of messed up people that would eventually ruin it and then it would fall. So Jesus, he came, he served, he sacrificed to build a different kind of kingdom, a kingdom that is in our hearts, a kingdom that builds up the humanity around us. And we can all be part of that kingdom because that kingdom will never fall. It rose with Jesus and it will never fall because it is in our hearts and it is in how we love and, and serve those around us. So, as we think about Easter, as we think about, um, you know, how we can look at this and apply it to our own lives, there's a few things that we can be thinking about over this, these next few weeks, this next month as we lead up to Easter. Um, one, we can choose to follow Jesus in His ways because of His sacrifice. Because Jesus sacrificed for us and opened the door for us to be part of that kingdom, we have to choose every day whether or not we want to be part of that kingdom and what we're going to do, how our actions are going to affect that decision. We can look at the life of Jesus and we can see how to live best in His kingdom. And we do that by one, sacrificing for others. Jesus gave us an example of sacrifice many times, but ultimately on the cross when He gave His own life so that we could be part of His kingdom. Loving others. Jesus called us to love one another. He said, love God and love people, right? And so we are called as Christians to love our neighbor as ourselves. We are called to love those around us. We are even called to love our enemy. That's insane. But we are called to do that. We are called to extend grace and mercy to those around us. Uh, if we are honest with ourselves and we think about our own lives, We've all been extended a lot of grace and a lot of mercy, uh, even when we've not acted great at all, right? When we deserve punishment, uh, we have been extended. People have given us, our parents, our teachers, our adults in our lives have given us a lot of grace and mercy because they love us. We're also called to do that to those around us being merciful to your classmates, even when somebody wrongs you, giving them another chance, forgiving them. And finally, uh, as we learned through this kingdom that Jesus came to establish, we are called to serve rather than to dominate. So it's not about being the biggest and the best and the strongest, and, and we you know, establish our dominance that way. It's about serving others. It's about loving others, no matter what. No matter what background a person has, no matter who they are or what even they choose to do, we are called to love our neighbors and to serve them because that is what makes us part of the kingdom of God. That's what furthers God's kingdom that He came to build. So. Uh, when we think about this Easter story, Jesus dying on the cross, three days later, rising from the dead, um, we're going to be focusing on these themes. We're going to be focusing on sacrifice and, and serving and, and loving and really changing our perspective because Jesus changed the perspective of everybody back then. They all thought it was about dominating. They all thought it was about coming with this massive army and, and creating their own empire. But Jesus said, no, 
that's not the way to be part of the kingdom of God. There's a better way to be part of a kingdom that will not rise and fall like every other kingdom. So we're going to look at that and uh, we're going to look at some different characters um, throughout the story and kind of dig deeper over the next few weeks into the specifics of what happened uh, in the Easter story. So get ready for that. Uh, that's all I've got for you today. I uh, hope you have a great week. Uh, it's a, a new month, so start this month off well. It's a fresh start. Spring is almost here. Uh, so let's get excited and let's have a great week. I'll talk to you soon.